Right. Good morning, everyone. We are back again in uh, introduction to engineering. And the topic today is going to be about the uh, engineering calculations, which is an important skill for engineering student as well as the engineers when they work in the real world. So, and today we're gonna discuss about the, the fundamental of the calculations, the thing that you need to know. Uh, for example, the unit, the style of writing that you should, uh, that you are suggested to follow. And also in the second part, we're gonna discuss about the branches of the mathematics, the, the, the topic of the mathematics that uh, that are basics for study the engineering. Okay, uh, first of all, I think uh, you get involved with a lot of the the calculation, right? And one thing that might uh, interest you and bring you to study engineering is because you are love you love in calculation, you love in physics. You love in mathematics, right? I guess so, at least. Uh, but however, uh, you know that these topics are complex. When I say complex, that means uh, there are many things happen together, right? So if you want to present the, the calculation or, or the solution of the problem that are complex, that means you need to have a very good step uh, to to write or to, to tell your, your thought, to tell people what you are, are thinking. Okay, and on the right is one good example that I would like you to follow. Every time you answer the, the a question, for example, when you sit in exam and you ask to show your calculation, so you need to have with a clear representation of your thought and try to transfer your thought into the written work. Let's see together. So as you can see on the right, the first one that you, you are suggested to have is a given. So you might need to uh, mention clearly that what you were, you were asked to do and what you were given. Okay, in this case, you you were given the structure loaded as shown. This is the, the problem, the structure loaded as shown, right? And after that, you mentioned clearly that you are finding the reaction forces at A and B. Yeah, why is A and B here? This is A and this is B, okay? And after that, you tell the and the reader that you are going to give the solution. So the solution first step is going to be writing a free body diagram. And you show the free body diagram over here, right? And then you apply the equilibrium condition. You have a summation fx equal to zero, summation fy equal to zero, and summation moment uh, around the a point equal to zero. And this is a, the symbol for zero, used a lot in, in America. And as you can see here, there is no calculation step at all, but I would say, I, I would call this the assumption or the condition that you're gonna apply in the calculation. And once you define all of the necessary condition, you apply to the equation. And this is a calculation step. So you have uh, clearly defined that the arrow from uh, to, to the right is positive, right? And arrow to the, to the north is a positive and the counterclockwise is positive. And after that, you apply all of the, the condition above and you uh, plug in the, the number later, right? And after that, 
you give a summarize of your calculation and here we go you get the final result one most important thing that you need to uh, keep in mind that you need to put unit every time at the end okay unit is very serious okay and this is the the as i mentioned earlier this is a good example and you can find it's very clear you have to follow step so i would suggest you every time you go into the sitting exam please try to apply this approach you, you can practice it on your own every time right? you you do the calculation to so start with a given find solution apply the condition and plug in the number and give solution right you can put the double underline to emphasize that this is the this is your answer or sometimes we use chaff right chaff sign chaff symbol to uh, emphasize this is our answer to the question okay next in the calculation you are going to be get you are going to get involved with a lot of the number system and in engineering there are actually three types of the number system that you gonna get involved a lot but in this slide it shows just two the first one is decimal system right decimal system is in in Thai, in Thai we call time sip yeah? best 10 system uh, anyone can tell me please what exactly is the decimal system any idea on that when we say decimal system what exactly does that mean เมทาวีครับไหนลองตอบผมหน่อยครับอะไรคือเลขฐานสิบอืมเมทาวีครับไหนลองตอบผมหน่อยครับอะไรคือเลขฐานสิบครับไหนลองตอบผมหน่อย
we use up all of the, the symbols. We just put a new one on the left. This is the, this is the simple rule, as you can see here. So the first number would be zero, right? It's zero. The first number is zero for the binary system. And after that, we change zero. We count up and we change from zero to one. And we use up all of our uh, symbols. We just place the new one on the left. So actually, this is zero one, right? And when we use that, we count up the, the left digit. So we have one zero. And after that, we have one one. At this step, we use up all of the symbol for the two digits. So we bring up the new one on the left, on the left hand side. So we have one zero zero, one zero one, one one zero. And we can guess we have one one one. And again, we have one zero zero zero. Okay, this is the, the principle of the counting. Again, if you can, uh, if you consider the decimal system, the, the, the rule can also apply, right? We count from zero to nine. And after that, we have a new digit on the left. So we have one zero, and we have one, two, one, 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 two, until one nine. And we have two zero. And you keep counting, it's the, the number is going up, going up. And once we have 99 or 99, when it's plus one is again, we have a new digit on the left, it's one zero zero. This is the, the principle of the counting, right? And actually, if you, uh, you are interested in the, the programming that which is very important for the engineers, it's, 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 one of the important skills for engineers nowadays, you might need to know another system. It's called the hex system. Hex system is the Tan Sipok. We will have uh, 16 symbols for the hex system, right? And you can guess we have 10, 10 symbols for the decimal system, the base 10 system. And after that, it's, uh, Another six symbols, we just take it from the simple English alphabet. So it's going to be A, B, C, D, E, and F. So after that, we end up with 16 symbols for the hex system. And you will learn this more uh, in, the, in the computer programming, okay? And the, in this table, show how you can add uh, tran transform from the binary system into the decimal system. And I think you familiar with this already. Right? Apart from the number numbering system, you need to know about the dimensions and dimension is very crucial. Okay? And actually, the scientists divide the, the dimension into pieces and it's and it's come up with the, the concept of the fundamental dimensions. Right? For example, in the past, uh, human being uh, focused on a measurement. We usually measurement land, measure land, right? the area of the land and measurement the length and volume. So if you break down the dimension of, of area of volume into pieces, you will come up with the length L. Right? Because if you want to measure an area, you need to measure at least uh, two lengths. Right? For example, an area of a rectangular, you need to measure the length of the two, two sides of the rectangle, the, the rectangular. And after that, you multiply the two numbers together. When you multiply the two numbers together and the two numbers are length, right? you come up with the length squared. Okay, and volume as well. The volume is the, the, the area times the height, right? So you come up with the L cube, L gamang sam, area L gamang song. And again, when you break down into the, the fundamental dimension, you come back to the basic of length. 
Okay, and if you want to measure the the velocity, the definition of velocity is the the distance that are measured from the starting point to a particular point over the time that used to travel, right? So the unit is going to be the dimension is going to be the length over the time. Acceleration as well is going to be the difference between the velocity of two states. So you can have L over T, T squared, or something like that. Okay. And scientists come up with the concept of the fundamental dimensions. And in this list, it's a seven fundamental dimension. I, I say dimensions, right? I, I haven't mentioned about the unit yet. Okay, so as you can see here, we didn't, we haven't discussed about the, the metric unit, the English unit yet, but just only the, the dimension. Um, when you want to, uh, to tell a position of one of your friends who are sitting in a particular point in the study room, how many dimensions do you want to use? I think you, you can guess, you need to have three dimensions, right? You might have an uh, origin point, for example, here. You can have a room. This is a room, right? And you say, okay, you consider this corner of the room as the origin point, and one of your friends sit here. You need to measure from uh, the origin point to this direction, to this direction, right? And to this direction to identify the position of your friend. Okay, that means you need to have three dimension. This is how it works. Okay, and if you have moving, I mean, your friend can moving around. That means the position of your friend can change over time, right? That means you do have one more uh, dimension to uh, identify the position of your friend exactly, right? So you need to have four dimensions, three dimension for position, and another dimension which is time for movement. Okay, this is the meaning of the dimension. And on the right, column of the table, uh, table 7.2 is the derived uh, dimensions. As you can see, we have a mass density, which is a mass over length cube, right? Force is the ML over T squared. Energy is ML over ML squared over T squared, something like that. And when you know the dimension, now we are going to discuss about the unit. Okay, and as you can see here, according to the SI unit, SI unit is a is a international system of unit, and because it's French, so it swap the the position of the the word is swap. That's why we call it SI unit. Okay, and the SI unit is uh, a standard unit that used widely in Europe. Uh, at the beginning, the, the unit that widely used around the world is the English unit because the English is the, is the, uh, how it's called, is the, is the, uh, the biggest kingdom in, in the world, right? <clears throat> and when they travel they, to the colonized country, they bring their own uh, unit. But the, the scientists who uh, study intensively on the unit, 
uh, from French and uh, they have the uh, construct the SI unit, SI system and convince the scientists around the world to use the SI units. And here, this is a quantity or dimension in the table 7.3. And the second column show unit. And this is a suggested unit that uh, we use nowadays, right? Length, we measure the length in meter. We measure mass in kilogram. We measure time in second and electric current in ampere. ampere. Thermodynamic temperature in Kelvin. Amount of substance we measure in mole and luminous intensity, quam chem sang in candela. I think you know this already, right? Because this is the basic of the um, pre university physics, and this is symbol that you use. So, this is very important because if you don't want to get confused uh, in calculation, please refer to the unit, the SI unit. This, the SI unit is the, is the main unit that unit system that we use in Thailand. Okay. For example, if you uh, do a calculation for a problem that given that give you some quantity, some length quantity in centimeter, if you don't want to get confused, you need to take the prefix out and try to convert the, the meter in uh, sorry the centimeter into meter. Okay, this is a trick. And <clears throat> moreover, we also have the, the thing that called supplementary units and derived units. Table 7.4 show you the supplementary units. And as you can see, there are two quantities, which is the plane angle. Plane angle has a unit in radian. The symbol is RAD and solid angle is the radian, SR. If I ask you to uh, consider about the unit of the plane angle that derives from the basic unit, what would it be? So let's discuss together. This is the definition of radian, right? I have theta and I have the length of this arc A with the uh, radius R. So radian or theta equal to A over R, right? It's a ratio, it's a kind of ratio between the, the segment of a circle over the radius. That's why we have this formula. Uh, the circumference of a circle is two pi r, right? This is theta. Sorry, this is a. Right. Actually, is is a over r equal to two pi? It's, it's tell us that for this angle, a circle has the arc, the arc length equal to this value. Okay, so the the dimension of A is L, and the dimension of R is also L. As you can see here, L and L are cancelled out, so there is no unit no derived unit for the radian, but it's very, very important unit. I mean, the, the, the symbol radian, the, the unit radian. For the solid angle, is about the angle of the sphere. This is plane angle, right? A solid angle is, imagine you have a sphere, and this is the center of the sphere. And you have a radius of R, and there is a patch over here, right? And you have, as you you can imagine that you have you can have 
two kind of angle, right? The angle over the, the azimuth direction, the azimuth angle, I call it phi. And the angle along the elevation, I call it theta. So this is a solid angle. It's a little bit more difficult to imagine about this because we don't we didn't uh, uh, familiar with this, and we call this kind of angle stir radian. Next, this is a derived uh, unit. Right, we have frequency, we have force, we have uh, pressure, and so on. And the unit of the derived unit usually give to the uh, important persons, for example, Hertz, right? Newton, I think you know Newton very well. Pascal, Joe, James Watt, right? James Watt, who invented the uh, steam engine and we give the name to the unit of power. And Coulomb voltage, you know, Volta, Alexander Volta, right? And this is a symbol, which is the abbreviation of the, the name of the unit. And in the column formula, the formula is kind of uh, the link between the derived unit to the basic unit, to the fundamental unit. Okay, for example, Hertz is the one over S or S uh, uh, to the power of minus one. And Newton, Newton is a kilo, kilogram times meter per second square because F equal to MA, right? And M is the kilogram. And A is going to be meter per second square. Okay. As I mentioned many times, unit is very important. Every time you do calculation and in the final step, you, you should, you should uh, check the dimension. Does the dimension make sense? Sometimes it gives you a number, but it doesn't make sense at all because the number is too big or too small, right? So you need to be very careful about it. And one thing I would like to mention to you is the, the mass. As you can see here, only the mass has kilo at the front, right? And we call this prefix. All the rest of the units doesn't have prefix as a default. There is only the mass that has the uh, kilo, the, the prefix kilo in front, in front, right? So uh, on the same basis, you might think about the gram rather than the kilogram, right? But this is the it's kind of the thing that I want to mention at this step. It's called coherence. Coherence มันแปลว่าการสอดรับสอดคล้องกันนะครับคือระบบพวกเนี้ยเขาใช้คําว่าระบบนะครับเวลาเราพูดถึงระบบมันจะต้องสอดรับสอดคล้องกันเสมอน
finally we can have kilogram per meter second square. This is the, the unit of Pascal. So it, when you say about the, uh, where you are talking about the, the, the pressure and you check the basic unit, it's going to come up with the kilogram per meter six square at all time. Okay, and next, this is the other derived unit in the table 7.6. We have the area, which is a square meter. We have the volume, which is a cube, um, cube, cubic meter, and so on. Table 7.7 7 is the prefix, as I just mentioned. I'm not sure if you still uh, keep remember this when you were a high school student because when I was a, a student I, I, the primary school student I need to um, remember this very well it's one of the part it's like a multiplication table and we need to have this thing and here we have kilo we have mega we have giga we have tera Usually we don't use much about the deca and hecto. We use the is a kind of a ten uh, of a one thousand step or ten to the power of three. We have uh, ten to the power of three, ten to the power of six, ten to the power of nine, ten to the power of twelve. This is the one that we use oftenly. And for the the uh, negative side, we have um, milli. We have micro, we have nano, fico, femto, and auto. This is the, the one that we use uh, in mechanical. We use up to, right now, we use up to nano. Okay, next. This is the one that uh, most people get confused. It's called the uh, world's measurement system. You might not notice uh, the actually, but actually is very uh, really close to our daily life. For example, when you go to the market and you ask a merchant for a kilogram of, of fish. What exactly is the kilogram of fish? Is it mass or force? เวลาเราไปซื้อปลาหนึ่งกิโลกรัมอันนั้นแม่ค้าเขาช่างอะไรให้เราครับเขาช่างเขาช่างแมสหรือเขาช่างฟอร์สอ่าพวกเราค่อนข้างจะคุ้นเคยใช่ป่ะอ่าในกอล์ฟครับเราช่างแมสหรือเราช่างฟอร์สกอล์ฟสลันแมสครับผมเราช่างแมสอืมงั
right? In the calculation, if you follow the English system, which is the pound foot, feet, something like this, you are using this one. And you might need to know about the, the unit of the mass, which is called one slug. มีใครเคยได้ยินคำนี้มั้ยครับ if you go to the absolute system you regard the mass in the unit of the kilogram right and you have force in the unit of newton so this is very confusing as i mentioned earlier Right. You have you can have force as a kilogram. We call uh, in the gravitational system we call it pound force and kilogram force. Okay. And in absolute system we call it the mass pound and kilogram. Okay, and you need to keep in your mind that you might confuse with these two. Okay. In if you have one question, uh, I mean a scientific question uh, to uh, ask you to calculate in the English system, you need to keep in mind that uh, mass would be slug, it's not pound, right? And force would be pound force. And the meaning of slug is very, uh, very interesting. Uh, I put it over here. If you you can study further, if you uh, are interested in the slug, actually, in the term slug, it's, it's invented by this uh, British uh, physicist, namely Arthur Mason, Arthur Mason, Worth Worthington, and from his study, he just noticed that there is one thing called mass. คือในอดีตนี้เขาก็ไม่ได้รู้หรอกว่าแมสกับเวทมันต่างกันยังไงแต่คุณเวอร์ซิงตันเนี่ยเขาไปเจอนะครับเนี่ยอีส kind of uh, a constant so we just just notice that it's there but it's not meaningful so we call it slug slug ก็คือก้อนเหล็กนะครับแปลว่าก้อนเหล็ก Metal slug Metal slug ก็คือลูกปืนน่ะนะครับที่เป็นก้อนเหล็กมันแสดงให้เห็นว่าจริงไอ้คําว่าสลักนี่มันไม่ได้เป็นคําที่มันเขาไม่ได้ให้ความส
in this uh, example, it's going to be uh, two point four three multiplied by seven point uh, six seven five, right? And you come up with two digits because these two digits is the smallest, the, the few significant digits. And after that, you round up, round up the the last digit again. So I, I would call it you round up to uh, one digit smaller than the the fewest number of digits. In this case, so we have a two digits number, right? And we're gonna round it to just one digit number. So that's why the the answer would be uh, forty three point zero. Actually, we come up with uh, 42.95, right? And we round it one digit to 43.0. Okay. However, in the engineering work, you might need to ask, you may need to ask about the, the digit number in your calculation. For example, if you calculate the uh, young modulus, oh, sorry the stiffness of the stiffness I mean, stiffness of uh, your your machinery part so k is equal to something like this i give you one an ex as an example e might come up with 200 times 10 to the 9 i is going to be 1 over 12 b s square uh, v, v h cube and a is going to be uh, small a time times c you might notice that there are many uh, multiplication step and you know many variables so if you keep doing this you might end up with there's no digit at all so in calculation uh, it's really up to, uh, let's say, it's really up to the yeah, like in the university. It's really up to your teacher. You need to ask uh, how many digits that he asks you to uh, to place. However, uh, for me, I, I would suggest that you place it just two digit would be enough because uh, in engineering, uh, in mechanical engineering or uh, aerospace engineering. We usually work on the scale of a millimeter, right? And the two digit of the millimeter would bring you down to the scale of micrometer. And I would say that is the limit in the manufacturing, right? If you put place the six digit number in your design part, there is no one can put Right, could produce the magical part of your design to realize your design. So two digit would be enough, or maybe you can up to uh, three digit for some specific uh, task. Next year you're gonna this, uh, you're gonna learn about the the mechanical engineering drawing, and you're gonna uh, learn about how to fit two mechanical parts together. For example, if you have a shaft and you want to fit your shaft into a bearing, you need to produce your part at a certain level of precision. And the precision level would come down to the tens of micron or something like that. And this is the, the limitation in the mechanical design. Okay, so in general, two digit would be enough in the mechanical world. Uh, parenthesis, um, when you use the unit in millimeter. However, if you use the unit in according to the the scientific uh, notation or in metric notation, you might consider the unit in meter, right? And in meter, if you place just two digits, uh, that means you are uh, consider your your problem in the uh, degree of millimeter is not down to the micrometer. 
สเกลโอเค and this is how we use this is a, the scientific notation we usually use this a lot in our calculation right yeah this is a scientific notation and as I mentioned earlier right we uh, love to use as a multiplication of three by means of the, the the power number for example uh, 10 to 3 and uh, 10 to the 3 10 to the 6 something like that, uh, 10 to the minus 3 or 10 to the minus 6 right because is uh, in according to it is following the prefect system however this is just one suggestion actually you can use uh, whatever you want but if you follow the, the thing that I told you, uh, it's going to be much more easier to think about the physical world, right? When you say 9.6 times 10 to the minus three meter. So you can uh, imagine that this is going to be 9.6 uh, millimeter. You can think about this quickly, right? Or you can have a one, one gigabyte Right, uh, the, the size of the memory, one gigabyte. One gigabyte is going to be how much? 10 to the ninth, right? 10 to the ninth byte. Right, you, you can think about this quickly. It's much more quicker than you say 9.6 times, in, in this example, 9.6 times 10 to the minus two. You need to, spend a little bit of time to think about how big it is. Okay, that is the, the thing about the, the measurement, sorry, the, about the unit and about the notation that we're gonna use. Uh, any questions on this? Uh, so I'm going to the next step. The next step is the branches of the mathematics. Uh, in engineering, you are going to get involved a lot with these three groups of the mathematics, which is the algebra, uh, geometry, and analysis. Algebra. ภาษาไทยคือพิชคณิตอัลจีบรามันเหมือนเป็นภาษาอาหรับนะครับมาจากอาหรับเนี่ยมันแปลว่าการบวกลบคูณหารนะเป็นการคำนวณในอัลจีบรามันก็จะเกี่ยวข้องกับการคำนวณต่างๆ if you uh, consider the the mathematics theory you can uh, you can you might can see that you might see that there is just three these three branches it is about the plus minus multiplication and division, right? This is one branches, one, one branch. And the geometry, the measurement of the loop lang. Metry ก็คือการวัด Geo คือรูปลางนะครับเพราะฉะนั้น geometry มันคือการวัดรูปลางนะพวกสามเหลี่ยมอะไรต่างๆนะครับแล้วก็อีกอันหนึ่ง analysis จะเป็นพวก calculus อะไรพวกนี้นะครับก็จะมีอยู่สามตระกูลหลักถ้าเกิดเราจำแนกได้นะครับว่าไอ้สิ่งที่เรากำลังจะเรียนมาไปอยู่ในตระกูลไหนเราก็จะมีมุมมองที่ชัดเจนมากขึ้นนะครับสามารถที่จะรู้ว่าอ๋อมันสามารถจะเอาเอาความรู้ในชุดไหนเอามามาใช้นะโอเค so algebra is about the the calculation about the uh, in the past, we call it arithmetic and use the symbol to find the solution. And this is an interesting thing that you need to know. Uh, I give it over here. The first one you might need to know about the Greek alphabet. And this is a list of the Greek alphabet. If you're มีหลายๆตัวที่เราก็เรียกไม่ถูกอย่างเช่นเอพซิลอนนะตัว e เล็กนะครับตัว e บางทีเราก็เรียกมันตัว e เล็กใช่ไหมครับ
อัลฟาเบตาแกมมาอันนี้คือเดลตานะครับเดลตามีตัวซีตาครับนี่ก็คือเหมือนตัวแซดถ้าเกิดใครเคยเขียนภาษาอังกฤษตัวเขียนในสมัยก่อนเนี่ยผมใช่ปะผมไม่แน่ใจว่าตอนนี้ยังเขียนอยู่หรือเปล่าผมจะเห็นว่ามันคล้ายๆกันมันก็เอาอะไรเอาหัวยกขึ้นมาอนะครับก็ลักษณะแบบนี้มีอะไรต่อครับอีตาตัวเอ็นนะเป็นตัวเอ็นหางยาและอีตานะครับตัวเทตานะครับเทตานี่ก็เป็นตัวที่เราใช้บ่อยๆครับมันก็มีตัวอื่นๆที่ถ้าใครสนใจลองไปเรียนดูตัวนี้ตัวนี้นะครับจะเรียกตัวผิดกันประจำนะครับเรียกตัวหนึ่งถ้าคุณรู้จักพวกนี้แล้วก็อักษรกรีกพวกนี้แล้วก็เรียกมันถูกคุณก็จะอพูดถึงมันได้ชัดเจนมากขึ้นนะเนี่ยอุปซิลอนอุปซิลอนฟีนะตัวนี้ฟีคือบางเสียงมันออกลำบากเพราะว่าบ้านเราไม่มีเสียงพวกนี้ไข่นะครับตัวไข่ตัวนี้อ่านตัวซีนะครับต้องหุกปากนิดนึงแล้วก็เปล่งเสียงมาซีลักษณะนี้นะครับโอเมก้าโอเคครับวันนี้ก็ตารางเจ็ดจุดสิบนะครับเทเบิลเจ็ดจุดสิบกับเทเบิลเจ็ดจุดสิบเอ็ดเนี่ยนะครับก็จะเป็นสัญลักษณ์ต่างๆ We use a lot in the algebra. Uh, next one is about the geometry. The geometry is about the measurement of the 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 shape. Right. So we have as uh, the subclass of the geometry. The first one we call uh, plane geometry, which is about two D thing. And solid geometry is your 3D thing, and we also have the differential geometry, which is the apply uh, application of the calculus to the geometry. For example, if you study about motion of a particle, which is moving along this curve, it's moving like this, and in geometry. You are going to focus on the the shape of the uh, is is called trajectory part the the shape of the the part that this particle moving along, right? So you can have a vector over here, right? To point uh, the first vector is point into the 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 current position of the particle. And you also can have another vector. I call it R and R prime vector, right? To point to the the next position, next position of of the particle, the the position that uh, the particle is moving to. Right? From this uh, configuration, from this setup, we can apply the vector calculus, and we can find, we can calculate the The velocity of the vector, sorry, the velocity of the the particle, in this sense, and we call that uh, differential equation, that's the uh, differential geometry. Right. And a uh, prescri uh, descriptive geometry is going to talk about the the shape. How can you construct the surface or something like that? Okay, is a e student gonna? Uh, study a lot about this because the the descriptive the geometry get involved a lot in the aircraft design. For example, the shape of the the airfoil. We need to describe that describe the geometry of the airfoil. Right. And analytic geometry is is about the uh, try you the. You try to construct. You try to find a good definition of the geometry by using the the equation, or something like that. This is about the geometry, and also the trigonometry is the subclass of the geometry because it's you can imagine about this, right? A metric is meter. 
ก็คือการวัดทริโกโนก็คือตรีโกนนะตรีโกนก็คือสามเหลี่ยมมันคือเป็นการวัดสามเหลี่ยมนะครับ equation number seven point one is the and all the thing given in the table seven point twelve are very important and it's very basic that you need to know right? please uh, keep remember it this is very basic right is the table seven point twelve Is the definition of sine, cosine, tan, secant, cosecant, and cotangent, right? And the sine law and the cosine law is two things that you need to remember. This is a sine law. And this is the cosine law. Law of cosine, law of sine. Just keep it. Remember, help you a lot. Okay, and next is the about the calculus. The calculus is going to be about the derivative and integration. อะไรคือการหาอนุพันธ์อะไรคือ calculus ครับมีคนไหนให้คำนิยามสั้นๆได้บ้างไหนลองดูสิ What exactly is calculus? สุภาพิษครับไหนลองให้นิยามหน่อยครับอะไรคือ calculus คือพาพิษอยู่ไหมเอ่ยอะสริญญาครับสริญญาอยู่ไหมอะไรคือแคลคูลัสครับสริญญาตบกำลังลงมาแล้วลดกำลังใช่ไหมอาจารย์อันนั้นมันเป็นกระบวนการในการคำนวณที่เป็นสูตรอะไรคือแคลคูลัส Sorry I have no idea about that You have no idea about that You you cannot define the you give the definition of the calculus Okay that's fine Thank you Calculus นะมันคือการศึกษาการเปลี่ยนแปลงของฟังก์ชัน You are studying the change of one parameter that affect to the the result. For example, in the derivative, you are studying about the change of the time. Right? You want to know if the time change, how does the the displacement, the distance traveled change? And this is going to give you the the rate of the change, right? And we define it later as the the velocity. คือ calculus กับไอ้ calculus เนี่ยมันจะเป็นการศึกษาลักษณะนี้นะครับเราจะเห็นว่ามันเป็นการดูว่ามีการเปลี่ยนแปลงของฟังก์ชันเป็นยังไงนะครับเมื่อพารามิเตอร์เปลี่ยนไปนะครับว่า integration มันก็จะเป็นส่วนกลับนะครับเป็นการอ่าเหมือนการซ้ำกันนะครับซ้ำเอาพารามิเตอร์มาซ้ำนะครับนี่มันมันก็คงไม่ใช่คำอธิบายที่ดีนะคลคูลัสมันเป็นการหาส่วนกลับกันของอโทษทีครับอินทิเกรชันเป็นการหาส่วนกลับของของเดเรเวทีฟนะครับของดิฟเฟนเชียนมีสองส่วนนะครับคืออ่า Integration เนี่ยนะครับมันจะเป็นการเหมือนหากระบวนการย้อนกลับเรารู้สิ่งนี้แต่เรารู้ผลแล้วเราต้องการหาเหตุนะครับอันนี้เป็น integration จน differential ก็อย่างที่อธิบายไปนะครับโอเค next is the statistic the statistic is one Important uh, topic, but we don't study it a lot because we don't have enough room for it in in the in the curriculum. Well, anyway, when you go to the the real world of work, you use it a lot. And and 
The next one is about the graphical analysis. This is very important as well. And you, you're gonna use it a lot from now. Because uh, I think you uh, has the, you have the uh, physics laboratory, right? This semester, Lorian Physics Lab, And you need to interpret uh, what you have found in your experiment. And usually we like to uh, give the presentation right, in the term of the, the graphic. Right? And actually, uh, we like to uh, give the relation between the the independent parameter, which is the, the x-axis, and what you consider as the x-axis, and the dependent parameter, which is the y-axis. X, uh, dependent, independent parameter is the pattern. I understand that it's still possible to remember. The pattern is the value we put in. It's the value we put in. It's the value we put in. เป็นตัวกําหนดนะครับที่เราเรียกว่าตัวแปรอิสระคือเรากําหนดเลยว่ามันเป็นแบบนี้เป็นแบบนี้เป็นแบบนี้เป็นแบบนี้เป็นแบ
x is linear scale because we have a equal spacing and y in the log scale. Okay, in this case, this is a special case because uh, you just don't have the log at the uh, at the end, right? In this case, the the base, sorry, the I'm not sure how it's called. The e E is the um, I'm not sure how it's called, and it's, it's a constant. And you have the argument over here. Right? So if you take a log, you're gonna come up with log y equal to mx, right? In this case, mx plus log a. Because log n, ln is initial log, and it's just cancelled out with the e. E is a constant. When it's cancelled out, it gives you just only x. I would say there's just uh, some specific uh, relation, especially the relation about the population that we usually use the the e. You can you we gonna have the the data presented nicely in the semi log. This is a linear. This is log, so, and we call it semi log. Mm. You can see here, this is lock lock, right? This is also lock lock. And this is semi lock. When you plot the data, and the thing that, how can we construct the, the line or the curve uh, uh, appropriately? In this case, uh, we have a set of data given in the table 7.15, and we just plot it as a scattered data. So x, which is the uh, independent variable, we take this as a reference. We plot it on the x-axis. Right. This is x-axis. Is that y? This is x. Okay. So we have zero hour of study. And y is the grade, is the grade on examination. So this graph represents you the relation between number that you spent on your study and the result uh, as a grade on the examination. If you doesn't study at all, zero hours of study, you have fifty percent. Right. If you study one hour. You might have how many? Sixty-eight. If you study two hours, you have eighty-five or something, eighty-six or something like that. Right? If you study three hours, you have eighty-five and so on. Okay. So if I ask you to draw a line to represent this data, you might come up with many where many choices like this. You can have this one. I don't know because uh, you draw and I draw might be totally different. Someone might draw uh, like this. Yeah. So there are many choices that can be made. Someone would like to draw this line. So if we ask you uh, 15 students to draw a line, I would guess there is no uh, completely uh, uh, exactly the same line uh, from all of you. We have uh, 10, uh, 15 different lines, right? So, and we call this the graphical method. So it's like you, you just guess, you just guess the solution. However, we, have, we can have the syst a systematic method and we call it uh, averaging method, and I would like to ask you to follow the step. Uh, first of all, you need to divide the data into two subsets. Right. The first group of data come from the the even uh, indexed data. 
So in this case, it's going to be zero, two, and four. It just you just take one one out. This is the first group. First group. Oh, sorry. This is the first group. And this is the second group. Right. Divided the, your data into two groups. And after that, you can create this table. So we have um, 0, 2, 4, and y is going to be 50, 86, 90. And group 2 is 1, 3, 5, and y is 70, 85, and 98. And after that, you calculate the summation of x and summation of y, like this. Just add them together to get this result. Next, you can have an, an the this equation, right, the number one. This equation telling you that uh, summation of y is going to be equal to what uh, the average uh, slope times summation of x plus n b. Right. So n is going to be the number of the of the of the data of the sample. So in this case, we have n equal to three, right? Because we have three data. N equal to three. And when you substitute x and y into this equation, right, n equal to 3, you're going to come up with this equation and this equation. This is for the first group, and this is for the second group. OK. And when you have two equations and you solve for two unknown, right, in this case, our unknown is going to be the the slope m and the offset level b, right? And you can get b here and m here. And once you have that, you can have one equation that represents the data on the averaging sense. Is that fine? Okay, my cap. We need to find the Fen curve, the one which is the basis of the data. I believe that we are studying physics right now, and we will try to test some things and plot the data. Is that right? Is that right? We have the Fen curve, the one which is the basis of the data. Is that right? Is that right? We have the Fen curve, the one which is the basis of the data. Is that right? Is that right? We have the Fen curve, the one which is the basis of the data. แล้วคุณก็ต้องดูอะไรครับจุดตัดตรงนี้นะครับแล้วคุณก็หาอะไรเดลต้าไวเดลต้าเอ็กซ์มันถ้าจะเป็นแบบนี้คุณสิบกลุ่มคุณก็ทําไม่เหมือนกันคุณอาจจะลองดูก็ได้นะครับเดี๋ยวคุณจะได้ทําในแอสซิเมนต์ในครั้งนี้อยู่แล้วนะครับโอเคมีคําถามอะไรไหมครับกับตรงนี้And you're going to have an assignment to practice this approach. Let me show you the. Uh, here it is. I put this to the uh, e learning system already. So I would ask you to produce this Excel sheet. โดยที่ไอตัวข้อมูลตัวนี้นะครับคุณมีสองทางเลือก The first option is you take it from your 
uh, physics laboratory experiment นะครับไปเอาตัวอย่างมาสักอันนึงผมไม่แน่ใจว่าคุณทดลองอะไรไปบ้างนะครับไปเอาตัวอย่างมา and the thing is you gonna find the solution find the the sorry find the relation between these two parameter so in this case force is the uh, independent variables and have velocity as a dependent variable I plot the dependent variable on the x-axis and uh, the dependent variable on the y-axis like this ครับแล้วคุณก็จะได้เรียนรู้นะครับวิธีการในการที่จะอ่าใช้ครอฟฟิตติ้งนะครับ so you follow the step that I just uh, give you in the lecture you need to first of all divide the data into two groups right the first group would be zero twenty forty sixty eighty in this case I have the data group one and data group two as well and after that I have the summation of this right. and I use the formula to uh, calculate M and B okay and you're gonna find the, the solution here right we have A and B like this I put this in the assignment sheet already you can study all of the steps following the, the instruction long by foot time do and uh, this assignment is an individual assignment อ่าอย่าไปอ่าก๊อปปี้อะไรกันมานะครับพยายามฝึกทํามันก็จะเป็นโอกาสที่เราได้ใช้ไอ้ฝึกใช้ you don't have the uh, experiment data from the physics laboratory you can get some sample from data set you just go to our e-learning system right and for this week you have the a folder contain some data sets inside I provide you five data sets and you can use this but I would suggest you to use the the data that you get from a physics lab at the first option In this task, you were asked to you are you asked to do uh, two methods. The first one is the uh, graphical method. You might need to print out the uh, the graph sheets and plot your data, and you just draw a line, a straight line, to represent the relation between your data. Okay. And in this case, you might do it on your iPad. You, you can use your iPad. You can do it digitally. But anyway, at the end, you choose uh, put it in the same Excel file. And in the submission, I, I can uh, check your Excel file at the end. OK. ไม่ทราบมีคำถามตรงไหนไหมครับมีคำถามตรงไหนไหมครับมีคำถามตรงไหนไหมครับมีคำถามตรงไหนไหมครับมีคำถามตรงไหนไหมครับมีคำถามต
ภายในเนี่ยสัปดาห์นี้ไม่เกินวันจันทร์นะครับโอเคครับงั้นถ้ามีคำถามอะไรก็เชิญนะครับถ้าไม่มีก็ผมขอจบการบรรยายในหัวข้อวันนี้ไว้เท่านี้ก่อนนะครับขอบคุณครับขอบคุณครับอาจารย์ครับดีค่ะอาจารย์คะครับเอ่อกลุ่มที่อาจารย์บอกเมื่อกี้นี่กี่คนนะคะพวกเราตอนนี้เหลือสิบเจ็ดใช่ไหมทั้งเอ็มอีและเอีถูกปะเหลือสิบเจ็ดใช่ไหมครับก็ผมขอเป็นกลุ่มละห้าถึงหกคนละกันครับโอเคค่ะขอบคุณค่ะเราก็จะมีห้าห้าคนอยู่กี่กลุ่มอ่ะเนี่ยนะครับหกสามสิบแปดใช่ไหมครับเราจะมีห้าคนอยู่กลุ่มหนึ่งที่เหลือเป็นกลุ่มละหกนะครับครับผม